In chapter 2, we will be studying the motion of objects, as it says here, in one dimension only. So we may work uh, horizontally, so that would be our x-axis, and we'll also work just vertically, and that's our y-axis. But for this chapter, just motion up and back along the x-axis or up and down along the y-axis. Now, the kinematics equations, uh, kinematic is, is really uh, just a fancy word for motion. So, uh, motion equations, and they are uh, mathematical, and they'll describe how it is that an object is moving. We'll see more about the details of the mathematics in a moment. Uh, to fit it into an historical perspective, this really is the physics of Galileo, as it says here. So, Galileo lived from 1564 to 1642. Isaac Newton, who will play a major role in our course this year, was born in 1642, was in his 20s, so we're looking at uh, 1660s when he uh, formulated his laws of physics, which really uh, ushered in the, the world of modern physics, the age of modern physics uh, to us. So we'll see that this course is broken down into basic, basically three types of motion. A lot of the course, most of the course, is going to be spent with translational motion, A, that we have here, straight line motion. It'll become two-dimensional motion very quickly for us after our chapter two, two uh, unit here in kinematics of one dimension. Uh, but really from this chapter, chapter two up through chapter 10, we will be cementing the basic concepts for all of physics, whether you are studying as you are uh, with me in this course, uh, mechanics, uh, or whether you go on to electricity and magnetism or to uh, optics or other areas of physics. Uh, the concept of forces and energy and momentum are critical to understanding any of those concepts, and as you're going to see throughout this course, this course is extremely cumulative. You cannot let any misunderstanding or complete understanding of a topic go. You have to ask questions and get those questions answered. After we do translational motion, we will follow it up by two chapters of rotational motion. So there'll be chapters uh, 11 and 12. We'll finish the year out uh, with simple harmonic motion, vibrational motion, as it says here. Um, we'll study the details of that later in the course. And we'll also study universal gravitation, which is the uh, gravity that, that planets and stars and uh, all objects with mass exert on each other. Well, to give you a notion of how all three of these types of motion, translational, rotational, and vibrational, uh, come together in a, a, a single event for an object. You've all had chemistry, so here I'm looking at an example of just a diatomic molecule. So two atoms um, connected by a molecular bond like oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, for example. Uh, just floating through the atmosphere, floating through the room that you're sitting in. So those two atoms will have a molecular bond connecting them. And believe it or not, that molecular bond can be modeled as a spring, a spring force connecting those two. And we'll see uh, how that is done later in the course. We'll also see how those that dual atom, two atom molecule, can be represented as a single particle with a center of mass point given for the object. And as that molecule moves about the room that you're sitting in, that oxygen molecule, those atoms are vibrating. So the, the vibrational motion is represented by the spring, or will be that simple harmonic motion that we're going to talk about uh, later in the course. Uh, it certainly will be tumbling about, right? So it won't just be not moving at all. It'll be drifting and floating around, uh, moving about. And certainly if it starts at one point, then if we were to peg that one point as a zero, zero point, and then let it float throughout the room, it might reach a point, for example, here where it's moved seven to the right and three up, and maybe that's where we end our analysis of the motion. 
But to completely understand the motion, we would have to take into account uh, the energy that goes into all three of those types of motion. So we know from chemistry that when you heat an object up, that's, that's energy, and that, that molecules move faster, and the, the liquid or gas molecules move faster, the temperature of that substance goes up. That's all energy, and we're going to study uh, energy in detail uh, in this course, in our chapters 7 and 8. But we would have to take into account the energy associated with the overall net translation that we have here. We'd have to take into account the energy that's going into rotating the object, and we would also have to take into account the energy of the vibration of the object. So it all is going to come into play. So it is, in total, a, a relatively complicated motion, but we are going to break it down into its specific categories of motion, and we're going to understand how the mathematics of individually understanding those types of motion uh, leads us to build a mathematical model to understand all three working together. So that's kind of a brief overview of both Chapter 2 and a little bit of a description of the course in total. And in our next lesson, we are going to uh, move on with the specifics of one-dimensional motion.